today. Uh, my name is Robert. I, Robert Villa. I am the curator of one of Arizona's first greenhouses. It's, uh, it was built in 1903. Um, I have the distinct privilege of growing specimen plants at the Desert Laboratory, and I'm going to show you a couple of those in a little tour. So, um, as you can see, the Desert Lab is built out of volcanic rock. It's black and it produces a, a, a nice little micro uh, climate in the garden. It's, uh, it keeps it a little bit warmer and a little bit protected from the elements. Um, so, uh, if you follow me, we'll start uh, showcasing some of the plants. This is probably one of the most iconic plants here at the lab. It's an organ pipe cactus, which I believe was planted as a cutting in the early teens, the early 19 teens, uh, around when my grandfather was born. And it's a majestic, giant specimen. We'll see, I hid a little specimen plant as an experiment this is a tree mint from southern Sonora called Lipia umbellata, and it smells like lemon drops. And I'm just seeing how it does outside in Tucson, in this little microclimate. So all along the, uh, the porch of the lab, we have uh, container plants. The garden out here, uh, and in the greenhouse, it's meant to reflect the diversity of plants throughout the extent of the Sonoran Desert region, which is very arid and very tropical. Um, this is a great example of a, of one of a tropical species in the Sonoran Desert region. This is a rock fig, a Baja rock fig. And um, in the wild, these plants grow epiphytically. The, the little seedling uh, is pooped out. The seed is pooped out by a bird onto a rock, into a crevice, and it germinates, and it sends its roots through the air until it finds soil. They can be quite impressive in the wild. We have many species of bursera. This is probably the most tropical bursera in our collection. It's found from southern Sonora clear out to the Galapagos Islands, so, uh, around in the equator zone. Again, a lot of tropical species hit their northern limit in the Sonoran Desert. Oh, this is uh, Bursera penicillata. Thank you, Ben. Um, and it has the most delightful scent. It, it, it's sort of black licorice. Um, it's a it's a favorite. Uh, burning wood for a lot of people. Um, over here, we have a Jurassic plant. As a matter of fact, the Jurassic period was often called the Age of Cycads, before Steven Spielberg made it the Age of Dinosaurs. Um, so there's a coniferous plant, that's just a plant that produces cones, and in the wild it can take them up to 80 years to reach sexual maturity. Here's um, a uh, elephant tree, um, not a bursera, which is also sometimes called a elephant tree. This is not um, uh, aromatic, but um, it's a beautiful tree donated by our friend Mark Dimmitt. And uh, it's uh, about to go dormant. You can see with those yellow leaves, it's a winter grower that then goes dormant in the hot months of summer. A lot of the plants that are in the garden were personally collected by me uh, or Ben and our friends who just love to grow plants. And this was a perfect opportunity for this uh, unofficial club of plant loving plant growers to uh, showcase some of our most magnificent species, interesting species. This uh, was uh, planted probably in the 60s or 70s when Paul Martin 
was the director at the lab. This is Guayacan. It's a tropical cousin of creosote, and it has spectacular purple-blue flowers. It's an evergreen plant. And when we first inherited this plant as, as the new guard of the desert lab, uh, we weren't too sure how uh, healthy this plant was, but all we had to do was add water, and it's just come back so beautifully. Um, typically, they don't grow in this fashion. They have they tend to have a central trunk, but uh, years of frost have kind of caused it to look look like this. What season are its flowers in? The the this plant flowers in the summer rainy season, and. Um, one of the main species they use for mescal production in certain parts. Yes, yes, it's a, it's a favorite plant for mescal production, which everyone at the lab loves to drink. Might be the official drink of the desert lab. Um, let's see here, how are we doing on time? We're just about seven minutes in so far. Oh. until recently how rare this plant is even in the wild. It's a narrow endemic, which means that this species is found in a very small geographic area in, in Baja. Over here we have some more uh, inherited plants from the early days of the laboratory. This is uh, Ferrocactus hematocanthus. It's one of, one of the prettier spined Feral cacti. They have these long recurved spines, elegant. And just beyond is a small but beautiful blue agave called agave actites. And uh, this is a clone from uh, plants that were collected by Howard Gentry and given to George Ferguson at the herbarium at the U of A, and he gifted us uh, a, a, a specimen. So the plants that we grow here are living history. They're living legacies of everyone who has worked here or contributed to science in the Sonoran Desert. We have this, uh, this cistern which um, holds rainwater for us to water throughout the year. It's been wonderfully uh, updated. And uh, yeah, let's go have a look and see how cool it is.
cool. And it's a very nice better angle. You can see how close it is to the top. So where does this water come from? This water comes from our roofs. And uh, you can see the, the gutter system which has been installed. It's just a really pretty view up here. horticulturist at the uh, Desert Museum. And if you look closely, you can see how it's related to Zapotillo. So it looks like an upside down carrot or some weird creature. The, Spa the Spanish name is Cidio, which uh, is a formal term for candle because when these bloom, the top of the stems have this bright ball of, of white, yellow, cream flowers. Someone's been eating the barrel cacti fruit. Oh, uh, yes. Probably a little Juancito, a little ground squirrel. I wonder how they got that name, Little Johnny. <laughs> and out of print now. But, um, yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, well, the, the tag says Opuntia Invicta. Um, it's also known as um, Grusonia Invicta. And it's aptly named with those huge spines. We call it Grusomia, or something like that. And uh, you can see some flower buds. You can see that cacti bloom in the springtime and this has to do with their origins in the dry tropical forest. Um, when, when the uh, tropical conditions in Mexico uh, change to being seasonally dry, dry season, wet season, Cacti had to adapt very quickly to extremes of light and dryness and heat. And so they went from looking like relatively leafy plants uh, in the ground or living on trees to things with spines and succulent stems as an adaptation. The other adaptation uh, that I was alluding to just now is that they flower at a time when most things don't have leaves or when most things are dormant because they have the light and the resources to do it while everyone is dormant. So that's one of the characteristics of cacti and an evolutionary clue 
to um, the origins of cacti in the Sonoran Desert. Should we go see the Pinocerius with the yeah, buds? Yeah, let's go look at the, the one of the many species of queens of the night. Let's just point out this beautiful cowhorn agave, agave bovi cornuta. This is found in in uh, the mountains, mountains of southern Sonora, and through the Sierra Madre. Somebody's been digging in here as well. But, wow, I hope you can see the color and the texture, the alien nature of these flower buds. So what you're seeing is a cactus flower bud. And one of the defining features of, of cactus flowers is that the transition from what we call bracts and the calyx is kind of uh, ambiguous into the, the petals. Once the, once the flower opens, it's just sort of this grade from one plant part to the next. So it goes from something called a, a, um, a bract to a, a petal. It's, uh, whereas in most other plants, there's a very distinct difference. Um, cacti have what we call um, in, uh, inferior ovaries, which just means that the ovary sits below the flower, the flowering parts. And so all of the material that's needed to produce seeds, viable seeds, is in this region right here. And it will be helped by a moth that sticks its proboscis in there for nectar and moves pollen from flower to flower. And this, this cactus is also has a giant tuber underground. This is another feature of desert plants, is that um, they actually spend most of their existence as a fat tuber full of water and energy that becomes active and growing when it's wet, when, when conditions are favorable. Which species is this? This is Peniocerius johnstonia, and I, I believe this is uh, from Baja and the coast of Sonora. You'll see the name Sirius, C-E-R-E-U-S, in a lot of cactus names, and that um, is a root which means candle, because a lot of cacti bloom at night, and they have white flowers for attracting their pollinators. Here we have um, a specimen of the wild chili in our region. This is chiltepin, or capsicum annuum. This is the progenitor to most of the chili varieties that you eat uh, have their origins in this species. And it stops, the range of this plant stops in southern Arizona and it or starts in, in southern Arizona and goes all the way into a tiny corner of Colombia down the west coast, the Pacific coast of, of the Americas. Should we go to the greenhouse? Okay, let's go to the greenhouse, yeah. Here's another rock fig donated by Richard Felger. You can see that the plant frosted back a little bit, but it's coming back. And you can actually see the color difference in dead and green tissue. Ficus. Uh, ficus. Pertusa? Pertusa. Not, not, maybe not trigonata. No, produce, I think. This is nakapule, which means uh, earlobe in, in Yaki or Yoeme language because they're, they're buttressed, that, that they, they kind of grow over rocks and, and have a, the, the, the buttresses have the, the resemblance of, a, of an earlobe. This is uh, a wild. Uh, brown cherry or wild tomato relatives, Solanum heinziana. This is uh, Sanita or uh, Lophocereus shotii. And it relies on a moth, one moth species, for its pollination and reproduction. And 
vice versa. The moth relies on this cactus for, for its reproduction. Do you want to show us this other um, Fucaria here? Oh, yes. Too, on the way? Known as um, Palo Adan, uh, Adam's tree. Uh, it's one of, how many Fucariarias are there? 12? 11, 12. 12 or 11 species, including blue gem. We might, might, might try and convince Ben to collect all the species. Okay with that. In our collection. And, uh, you can see the new growth here. Yes, yes, new growth emerging. Hmm. Here's a Alamos um, organ pipe. It's got flower buds. Look at this mammillaria with all the flowers. Hmm. There must be a tag for that in their records. I know. I think it's mammillaria. It's almost like Brandigia in Baja, but it's, I think, from Chihuahua. Okay. This is another uh, island or Baja uh, kind of series. Websterianus, huh? Websterianus, yes. From Isla San Pedro, Alaska. Right some, near San Carlos. We have some island species. <laughs> Let's go this way. Okay, is that a gave zebra? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is uh, recovering nicely. We had to move him out of the way to plant the bujum. But it's uh, another endemic plant which is only found in the Sierra del Viejo. Agave colorata. Similar looking but comes from coastal thorn scrub. This is where a lot of the magic happens. This is where our uh, delicate, more uh, frost sensitive plants exist, like epiphytes. Epiphytes are plants that do not root in soil, but on rocks and other trees. This is Tillandsia, Caput medusae. Um, Tillandsias are in the pineapple family or the bromeliad family. You can see there's a fresh flower spike coming out. We have Selenocereus. Um, let's see, Selenocereus. There she comes. Vegans. Yes, Selenocereus vegans. Um, and we have the beautiful Bletia purpurea, which grows along the Rio Cuchuhaki in some southern Sonora near Alamos. And the closest living uh, relative to saguaro is called Neobuxbomia or Cephalocereus. This was donated by an Instagram fan. Um, See some Versera um, odorata leafing out. It's a wonderful scent. And I believe these are, this is agave perii, but it might be a new variety from the Sierra Madre of Sonora. And uh, yes, we, these uh, delightful little buttons of agaves are um, agave vilmoriniana, octopus agave, and it grows on vertical canyon walls in uh, tropical Sonora, um, and it's used as soap by native people there. Let's see, this is probably one of the biggest chiltepines you'll ever see. Again, donated by our friend Mark Dimmitt. This 
is uh, Tartan glandula ciliata, which, depending on who you ask, smells like pina colada or bubblegum. I wish we had smell-o-vision. More Tillandsia, Spruvian mesquite. This is another tree mint. Some frost damage, but yeah, not quite ready for the. I hate seeing the dead tips. Um, this is another rock thing. Ficus cotinifolia. Which was captured in uh, yeah. book by artist Nick Shurchu. Gems of the Desert Lab crew. He's a highly respected artist who splits his time between Tucson and New York City. And uh, he's been a great, a great friend of the lab. Now, we have two plants here. One looks like a native queen of the night. You could say that this might be Peniosirius. And you might say, oh, this looks like Bursera or, um, or Pachycorvus, but these are completely uh, different. They're from Madagascar, and they're perfect examples of convergent evolution. Unrelated species that uh, develop similar adaptations to survival in, in, this, in similar conditions. Who are they? Oh, I'm sorry. This is... Um, this is in the Euphorbia, or Spurge family, it's not the cactus, but it's developed almost identical physical features to um, Peniosirius striatus, the native Indian light. And this is Operculocaria, the carii, and um, it's, it, it's actually in the Anacardiaceae, which which our elephant tree is uh, it's same family, but it also looks like a, a, a bursera. This is Epipactus gigantea, and uh, Epipactus is a North American swamp orchid, which does make its way into the south southwest, and um, it's called gigantea because most Epipactus flowers are many, many times smaller than what you see. That's about a one inch size flower. What else can we show you? This is a, an encyclia orchid, which is developing a nice um, flower spike. The flowers smell just like vanilla. And that's because vanilla is actually an orchid, a species of orchid. And, uh, native to Mexico. It was the first domesticated orchid by the Totonac. And uh, ever since its discovery uh, by Europeans, it rivaled by uh, crops of vanilla in Madagascar. This is a, a tree daisy. This is a, a Montanoa rosea. Something I collected in Alamosas from seed. Ah, we have some resin coming out of our uh, Bursera Heinziana. Resin is sort of a patching band aid mechanism on the part of the plant when it's injured. And it's been used for centuries as frankincense, which is called copal. Let's see if it has a... Not all bursaras are aromatic. This one has a nice, a faint, sort of piney, citrusy smell. It's nice. We have uh, some cute baby Pima pineapple cactus. It's a very protected plant. It's a plant of special concern.
And um, so this is this is a this is a really cool plant. The leaf has been depicted on the wall over there, up above the door. And um, Tua Loca Medulliae. And this is an entire genus of plant which is named after Tuma Mock Hill. And normally you don't see this. I've sort of exposed it for people to see, but there's a giant tuber, and every summer a vine comes out for the plant to reproduce. And it's related to this guy. To these, yes. This is Ibervillia, another cu uh, wild cucumber. These were collected by Ben uh, on Isla... Seralvo. Seralvo, that's right. And these came from an exceptionally large uh, mother plant. Or the, the, the plants are exceptionally large in that population. With the tuber. So, yeah, you see, this, this is a great example of what a caudex is. A caudex is a swollen, succulent stem and uh, taproot zone area. This is a Penio cereus rosei. And this, this is a plant donated to us by the Huntington Botanical Gardens. And, um, we have a great relationship with the Huntington, which is one of the premier botanical institutions in the world, right up there with the Royal Gardens at Kew and, uh, and other places like that. Um, and just like Huntington, we keep meticulous as we can records of plants and that each plant has a number and who collected it, where they collected it, So we're, we're just a bunch of plant pals, plant pen pals. These are some of, some rare cacti as well. These are um, now in the genus Echinocereus, formerly Wilcoxia. Um, this is Echinocereus poselgeri. And I forget the other species, but they're only found within very small portions of Geography in Sonora. So this is probably just my well, this is my first full year dealing with a greenhouse, and it's about been about two or three years with the garden in general. So we're we're learning as we go. We have to learn the nuances of the microclimate and the plants themselves, but um, I, I think we're all pretty happy so far. Thank you, Beto. You're welcome.